What's up people? Piz out here for the DVD Fiends and today I am going to review a film that is very near and dear to my heart. It's one of my all-time favorite movies from the 80s. It is a crying shame that this film has not got a, an official DVD or Blu-ray release just yet. Uh, the film I'm talking about is 1987's Jack's Back, uh, starring James Spader in dual roles, written and directed by Rowdy Harrington. Um, <clears throat> this movie is it's it's 100 years to the date after the original Jack the Ripper slayings, um, and someone is copycatting those murders in the streets of Los Angeles. Now that premise um, <laughs> is pretty standard, straightforward, um, you know, genre exploitation style. Um, like many movies from this era trying to cash in on the horror wave, the slasher wave, all that, the, the popularity of those films. Um, this movie stands out above and beyond just the nameless rabble of those kinds of movies for many reasons. <clears throat> the first off being the phenomenal performances, perf well, I can call it performances from James Spader. He plays brothers, he plays twin brothers in this movie. One of them is a uh, you know nice guy, all American, boy next door, uh, medical student at a uh, free clinic, and the other is you know uh, he he went the opposite way. He was in the gangs and got in trouble with the law, and he's uh, kind of tough. Um, now that premise there too. I mean, <laughs> the same guy playing twin brothers. <clears throat> completely different types of twin brothers um, or, or completely just different character types. I mean that's a soap opera-ish uh, kind of thing but it is handled so well in this movie um, because of the performances by James Spader. Um, he is just, he, you really like both the characters. You feel for them, you feel for one of the characters at the halfway point um, you feel really bad for him, then he appears as, you know, this guy here, uh, there's John Westford, who's the good brother, <clears throat> Rick Westford, who's the, well, he's not a bad bro bad guy, but, um, you know, got in, been in trouble with the law. You like both of these characters instantly, you feel for them, you root for them, uh, Spader plays them both. Um, very differently. I mean, there's different little character quirks and things that he brings to each character to differentiate one from the other, which is just great acting. And also, um, what helps the believability of this is the writing from uh, writer-director Rowdy Harrington. Um, the characters are all well defined. The, the dialogue is great. Uh, you you feel like you you sort of know these characters. You like them. Uh, there's a there's just an awesome sequence at the beginning of the film where. Uh, John Westford, the medical student, walks into the free clinic, and there's a, an elderly woman in the um, waiting room, and she's clearly in pain. She's crying. She's sobbing. Her hand has been cut very bad, and um, he notices her. He walks up to her. He gets some gauze. He's 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 wrapping her wound. He's talking to her, trying to take her mind away from the pain, asking her about you know how many grandchildren do you have, and she's naming them off, and. And one of them's name's Ricky, and he goes, oh, Ricky, I had a brother named Ricky, is he the naughty one? And she goes, oh, yeah. And um, she, he takes his, he takes her mind away from the pain. At the end of it, he, he, he asks her if she's free Saturday night, which is just a beautiful, just a beautiful moment that, I mean, we don't see in a lot of, of, of films, especially today, where, you know, everything is just so, you know, what does this have to do? Does, does this piece of dialogue or this scene, does it directly impact the next scene, the progression of the movie, and if it doesn't, it's it's excised. Um, just little little things like that, little character uh, quirks and dialogue stuff is uh, is great. Um, the direction of Rowdy Harrington, the mood, the atmosphere is awesome. Um, the whodunit aspect of, of, of who's the who's the killer and and so on and so forth is handled extremely well. Um, the action scenes are are well. Uh, the action set piece is really, a, there's not really a lot of action in the movie. It's not that kind of, of, of movie, but those are handled really well. Uh, the soundtrack is awesome. A lot of great uh, atmospheric music, a lot of great 80s, uh, <laughs> there's a great 80s sort of techno synthy song that plays at the beginning of the movie and at the end of the movie. I just love that. Um, I just can't say enough great things about this film. Um, the acting is top par, the direction is top par. Um, 
The writing is awesome. It's it's just a great film. Why it's not gotten an official DVD release? And this is a this is a, a bootleg. I went out and bought this bootleg for like I think it's 15, 18 bucks online because I was just tired of waiting for an official DVD release. I, I was tired of my old VHS which I had worn out. Um, I'd actually spoken to uh, Michael Slipcase Felsher from Red Shirt Pictures. If you guys are, are uh, fans of Dead Pit, you know who Michael Slipcase Felsher is. Uh, does a lot of work on DVD, special edition, stuff like that. Did the Monster Squad, did um, Night of the Creeps. I asked him about Jack's Back. Why is this not on DVD? And he said that um, one of the people who, the, whoever owned the rights to this movie, um, was holding on to them for their son. Um, so that he could give the rights to his son and he could make money off of it. Which, I mean, this is really a cult movie. I mean, it's not like this is a huge movie that, you know, tens of thousands of people are pining for a, um, a DVD or Blu ray release of it. But um, it's one of those movies where a lot of people haven't seen it, haven't heard of it, and when they do see it, I mean, I've turned a handful of people onto this movie, and once they see it, they just like it. It's. it's 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 a great flick. I can't say enough good things about it. I highly highly recommend you guys going out. You can pick it up on eBay. The VHS. Luckily, the VHSs aren't uh, hard to find. You can grab it on on eBay for a couple of bucks. I think I bought mine for a dollar eighty eight um, a, a long time ago. Um, but I, I checked recently. You, you can still get them on VHS for super cheap. Highly recommend checking the this movie out. Um, if you can get a bootleg for a decent price on DVD, I would go for that too. But again, it's just a crying shame why this hasn't gotten a proper DVD or Blu-ray release. It's a great film. It's one of my all-time favorite 80s movies. It deserves to be seen. Um, I think the premise definitely um, sort of shortchanged the movie. Uh, it wasn't released properly by Paramount when it was released back in 87. It got a very limited release. Uh, Roger Ebert liked the movie. He gave it a thumbs up. He gave it a three star review. But um, <clears throat> it just sort of fell by the wayside. It got lumped in with a lot of the exploitation genre trash that was out at the time and people overlooked it. Um, so I really can't say enough great things about it. Jack's back. 1987, written and directed by Rowdy Harrington, starring James Spader, Cynthia Gibb, uh, Jim Haney, Robert Picardo, Rod Loomis. Awesome cast, awesome performances all around. Just a great film. All around a great film. I can't say enough good things about it. So I'm just going to stop. I'm rambling at this point. Um, Jack's back. By all means, go check it out. Um, awesome, awesome movie. Um, if you like this review, go ahead and... Uh, Come on by my uh, my personal channel and subscribe and check out some of the other reviews and content that I've got over there. And uh, again, thanks for watching. You guys take it easy. Biz out for the DVD fiends. Peace.